Well, what's up YouTube? This is JP Panther back video and today's video is actually my Bleach Thousand Year Blood War episode 4 review. Uh, sorry my uh, sorry to you guys. Uh, I couldn't do the review yesterday. I was just really really tired from work and stuff like that and I knew it was Halloween and things like that and I was like kind of busy as well. So I'm here to do it the day after. So at least I'm here. Listen, it's better late than never. So that's the best way to describe it, right? But overall with this episode particularly, I ain't gonna lie, man. I love again. I read the manga, so it's a lot more different. It's a lot different for me when it comes to experience. But overall, I ain't gonna lie. I know a lot of people. Well, not a lot of people. I know like for Neverworld and a couple other YouTubers, they complained about it and Nick picked about the pacing and stuff like that. Honestly, I'm fine with the pacing. I, thought, I mean, the pacing's really fast. But if you ever read Bleach, if like most of you guys who are manga readers, you guys kind of know what I'm talking about. Bleach, the way Bleach's manga structure is, is that it's a lot of it's picture frame to picture frame. So it's easier to adapt a lot, a lot of those chapters really, really quick. And that's one of the reasons why Bleach always went into filler because a lot of Kubo's pacing when it comes to the manga, it's very picture frame to picture frame. So it's easier to adapt when it comes to uh, the anime episode, stuff like that. And I, what I read, I guess they had like, I think they adapted five chapters in this episode. But overall, I love this episode. I have no problems with... Well, I had some problems with it here and there. But overall, the way it started was really, really good. Um, I liked how the Quincy's came in there. Like To me, I'll be honest with you. I think the Quincy's are gangster. Huh? Of those Stern Ritters, the Quincy's, whatever you want to call them. I thought they were gangster as hell. Because the way the Hasbrook showed up. And they showed all the different letters of their powers and stuff like that. Again, if you read the manga, you know what I'm talking about. Like the rankings of... Pretty much, if you guys don't know, I'm going to say it right now, is that most of y'all who watch this read the manga, so it's not like me spoiling, spoiling, but pretty much, if you guys notice in the anime, like, all the Quincy's have a letter, and if you guys don't know, the letters represent, like, the power, like, what represents their power and stuff like that, so you'll you'll start seeing it later on in uh, the series and stuff like that, so each letter represents a particular power that a Quincy has. Um, so that's something I was throw that out there as well, because a lot of people got confused, like, why do they have the letters with each of the Stern Knights and stuff like that. But overall, I liked how Hashvault came in there and just sliced the Aizen-looking dude up, because he's like, nah, I'm, I'm a squad of whatever, and he attacks, and Hashvault's like, oh, you're scared, blah, blah, slashes him, boom, dead, and then you see Kill the Shadow. I'm like, damn, man, that's crazy. And then you see Asnot, the other Quincy, where he's just pretty much killing all the Soul Reapers, and they're screaming for their life, pretty much, and the other Soul Reapers are pretty much like, oh, I'm scared, I'm out, and the other one was like, we can't, we can't just uh, leave. We have to put our lives for the Cerate, stuff like that. And then that guy was about to get killed and Reggie shows up and pretty much says, yo, let us, uh, he pretty much says, you guys leave. I'm going to take care of it, blah, blah. And then Reggie starts fighting Asna and nothing works. And then Masti Gladlene comes in there and Biakuya comes in there to try to stop his attack. And it's pretty much Biakuya and Asna and uh pretty much they fight then you have bombietto she's going all crazy just killing all the soul reapers and kamamura comes in there and be like hey someone like you a little girl like you is part of the rebel oh someone like you is a doggy part of the soul reaper must be uh, a shortage and then soyphone tries to go after the other guy doesn't work um uh, hitsugaya fights uh, uh chengdu that didn't work either uh kensei no, uh, Kensei Rose is fighting the Kodak Black looking Quincy guy, Nana, Puna, whatever his name, right? And then you have uh, Sensui fighting the. Uh, well, I forgot the dude's name, but he looks like uh, uh, the Kentucky Fried Trick Chicken looking dude. I forgot the dude's name, but like he was fighting him, and Sensui is trying to fight him, you know, too laid back, and then the dude blasts his. Pretty much blows out his eye with a Quincy gun. Boom. Gets shot. And it's like, damn, it's harder than what I thought. And then what happens to all the cap? Well, not all the captains, but majority of the captains. Well, the, the big popular like Soyphone, Hitsagaya, Kamamura, Soyphone. They use their Bankai. And, you know, and they pretty much try to release it. And then the Quincy's pretty much stole their Bankai. And they're like, oh, damn, how do we beat them? Renji's like... How am I supposed to beat them without a Bankai? And he was about to do... Ba he was about to say, Bon. And then even Biakui was like, Don't be a dumbass. We we can't afford to lose your Bankai. He says, How are we supposed to beat them without a Bankai? 
And a lot of people's like, man, the Quincy's they're gangsters as hell. But the problem I have with the Quincy's is that they have to steal their bankai in order to weaken the Soul Reapers rather than fight them at their full strength. And the thing is with the Quincy's is that, yeah, they came out like gangsters as hell, but they also came out with a strong advantage over the Soul Reapers because they came out of nowhere. They're like, hey, we popping up, blah, blah, blah. We're starting a war. It's almost, to me, this reminds me of the, the pain invasion arc in Naruto a little bit, right? It kind of has that same feeling, but I think this is a lot better personally because it shows you that nobody is going to win. And I feel like the Soul Reapers are going to lose this particular battle. So honestly, man, I thought it was really good, man. Like the Soul, this is the first time I really saw the Soul Reapers really lose. And you're like, well, they fought Aizen and stuff like that. Yeah, but Aizen, like it was different because Aizen, they were always a step ahead of Aizen. And even though Aizen did defeat him, but Aizen had to separate the Soul Reapers in order to beat him. Like, this is where the Quincy's are coming in there and fighting all 13 members, or the majority of the members. And most of them are getting clapped or killed, and then lieutenants are pretty much clapped. With Wake of Moon and all that, they separated them. Like, Unahana, Kimpachi, Byakuya, uh, they were in Wake of Mundo, and Mayuri as well. And the other remaining were in the fake car Tur- town. So... Aizen was separating a lot of them. And also, remember, they they left because, remember, Aizen, Tosin, Gein, they weakened the Soul Reapers because, you remember, there was 13 and they only had 10 members, really. So the other members were in Wake Moon and the other one were Fake Heart Crew Town. So, honestly, I just think the way the Quincy's come in there, they were just gangster and they were badass and they just didn't give a damn. And Yamamoto looks like he's going to have to step up because you can't have someone like Yamamoto just sitting there watching his people get his lieutenants and his subordinates getting killed and he's doing nothing. So to me, I think Yamamoto's going to have to come in there and slice these Quincy's up. You feel me? That's just what I personally think, right? And then of course, we get to the battle with Ichigo and Kurge. Kurge's like, why can't I steal his Bankai? Blah, blah, blah. And then they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting. Udhara's getting a call from the... Uh, um, the research and development guy and stuff like that, and pretty much telling him, yo, we need Ichigo because he's the only one who can fight these guys without their uh, without getting his bankai stone stuff like that. So pretty much he tells, pretty much Udohara comes in there, blasts Kurge in the stomach, and then uh, he pretty much tells Ichigo go to the Ser- Serate and you know and save Soul Society and stuff like that. But then Ichigo gets uh, trapped in you know the Gangata. And then we thought Kurgre was dead, but he really wasn't. He still had enough energy left to clap Chad. Because I remember in the manga, I don't remember Chad getting his arm, his stomach blown out or Orohime. But I do remember when Udahara got shot in the the back with the Quincy bow or whatever it was or the Reishi arrow. Uh, I do remember that. But I don't remember Chad and or- Orohime getting clapped like that. I just, if they did, I don't remember. Maybe it's been like 10 years since I read the manga. So at least that particular part. But pretty much Kirby says, Your Majesty told me to wait to trap Ichigo and things like that. And he pretty much says, Ichigo, stay there while the Soul Society is crashing and burning. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. And we won't know until next week what happens. But. Honestly, I thought it was a good episode. I know people were... Most people liked it. What I've read is that most people like it. Um, I I personally think Bleach is anime of the year, personally. But I just feel like Chainsaw Man is going to be because it's more easier for normies to get into. But overall, I like this episode. Um, I personally give it... I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. Because there were some problems here that I had issues with. But overall, it was a really, really good episode. And I really have zero, zero complaints about it. Some things here and I had some issues with it. Like, the pacing was kind of weird on how they execute it. But it was kind of fine. I thought the animation was very, very good. The way the Quincy stole the Bankais. It just looked really magical when Soifon got her Bankai stolen. And you also got to realize, it's been like 10 years since we got to see all the captains fight like that. So it was... A very nostalgia kind of feeling. So again, that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you rate and like the video and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Peace and have a great day and take care.